Hello everyone, welcome back to my second channel, welcome back to Jack in the Books. I just filmed a part one to this video where I basically took 10 random books from my bookshelf and then judged them based entirely on their first line. So I ranked them from 10th place to 1st place just based on that opening line and it was really fun! And so immediately after finishing recording that video, I just went and got 10 more books and so welcome to part 2, I guess, of the opening line challenge. So these are the next 10 books that I'm gonna rank, um, and basically I will just read you the opening line, we'll see what it kind of tells us about the book. I don't think I've read any of these, let's see. No, I haven't, I haven't read a single one of these, so this is really interesting because it's going to kind of give me an insight into what the book is about. And the way that I'm gonna rank them is by using this kitchen roll as like a podium, and so we'll rank them up here. I don't know, it worked last time. Before we carry on, I just wanted to let you know that today's video is very kindly brought to you by Squarespace. Friends of the channel, we love Squarespace. Squarespace is like the backbone that keeps this channel going. And aside from all of that, Squarespace is also the ultimate place to create your online store or website. There's great marketing and analytical tools so you can keep track of who is enjoying your content, where in the world they are, and therefore what you should make more of. So that's useful for being very efficient, but also Squarespace allows you to completely customize something to make it completely unique to yourself. Having a website that authentically represents you is very important. It's how people get to know you as a person, as a brand, as a business. And with Squarespace's amazing range of templates, you can pick something that's easy to customize and make something that is entirely your own. I'm busy working on my website at the moment, and if you would like to do the same, you can head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And then when you're ready to launch, you can take 10% off at squarespace.com slash jackinthebooks, and there you will get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So don't miss this deal. Check it out. Link is down below. Thanks so much Squarespace. Firstly, we have Circe by Madeline Miller. I think this is going to be my next read, so please don't be shit, please don't be shit, let's see. When I was born, the name for what I was did not exist. Hmm. Okay. That was quite cool. I liked that. It's it's definitely like a, a mid <laughs> opening line. It's not the most captivating thing I've ever read, but I guess it definitely establishes that concept of mythology, and also that this is a kind of origin story. So I like it, but we'll see what else we have. This is Breasts and Eggs by Miyako Kawakami. I'm predicting <laughs> that this is going to have a cracking opening line. I think this is all about kind of surgery and that kind of thing and how people look. So let's see. So the opening section of this is, are you poor? Um, and the first line is, if you want to know how poor someone was growing up, ask them how many windows they had. I kind of love that. I love just going straight in with that. It's so perfectly random. And I suppose introduces the idea that throughout this book, we're probably going to discuss themes of class and wealth disparity. And also privilege is kind of a taboo subject. So um, as is surgery and talking about the way that we feel that we look. So I think that maybe sets the tone quite well. I mean, it's definitely number one, for now, and we'll see. This is We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. I'm gonna read this around Halloween because I think it's meant to be like a little bit spooky, a little bit sinister maybe. I don't know, I haven't read it yet. So I've kind of been saving this one, but let's see. Opening line is, my name is Mary Catherine Blackwood. Boring! That's immediately bottom of the pile. I'll be surprised if anything ends up lower than that. What a disappointment, jeez. That's how you want to start your book? Sorry, it's a no from me. No thank you. You can do better than that. Hopefully this book can. Let's have a look. This is Kitchen. Why did I say it like that? <laughs> um, this is Kitchen by Banana Yoshimoto. And the opening line is, For a very long time, there was something I wanted to say in a novel. And I wanted, no matter what it took, to continue writing until I got the saying of it out of my system. This book is what resulted from that history of persistence. I like that. Although I feel like that's sort of what every book kind of is. So it's not number one, I think it's number two. But I guess what that's telling us is that this book is going to be sort of confessional, it's someone's life story, it's something that has been bubbling away at them. So maybe we'll get some sort of like childhood trauma or something along those lines. I don't know, I'm sure a lot of you have read the book so I might be completely off. That's the kind of vibe I'm getting. Um, also a fun thing is if you wanna play along at home. <laughs> you can write in the comment section what your order personally would have been, because I'm sure it will differ to mine, because um, obviously different things get each of us hooked. But the next book is this one, Their Eyes Were Watching God. Cracking title, let's see if it has a cracking opening line. Well, firstly, this has an introduction by Zadie Smith, who is just the queen, and I think every book ever should be introduced by Zadie Smith. 
if it could be. Um, but let's see. Ships at a distance have every man's wish on board. Ships at a distance have every man's wish on board. Ships at a distance have every man's wish on board. I'm still like processing. So I guess that's kind of talking about the abstract potential of like getting away, of travel, of being out at sea from the perspective of the person who isn't in that position, like from the person who's still at the shore. So I guess this is my prediction that maybe we'll have some sort of like failed expectation, something that's like underwhelming or doesn't live up to what someone imagined life would be. I imagine if you're standing like on the shore looking out at ships, you think of all the potential and the unknown and what they must be seeing. Um, whereas the reality is maybe not quite as exciting as one might believe it to be. I don't know really, this is hard. Um, I'm trying- I'm debating whether to put it above or below Circe. I kind of liked the Cer oh I don't know, these are- really I'd put those two as completely equal. Let's put it here for now and I can always change my mind, I guess. I don't know if I'm giving Circe more credit than is due because I'm just excited to read that book, but here's another one I I'm desperate to read. This is Memorial. I believe this book is about a guy's fiance slash husband slash boyfriend who ends up living with the other one's mother. So it's like this mismatch of like a person's partner and the, that same person's mother now living together and being roommates all of a sudden, missing the link of the person who connects them. Uh, so I think it's going to be quite a funny uh, book, but let's see what the tone is. Mike's taking off for Osaka, but his mother's flying into Houston. Okay, that's kind of like a practical, <laughs> like that's a kind of logistical opening line that kind of sets the tone, oh, I think it gets better. So like the, the next couple of lines, which we won't take into consideration here, but just for you, for your benefit. Mike's taking off for Osaka, but his mother's flying into Houston just for a few weeks, he says, or maybe a couple of months, he says, but I need to go. The first thing I think is fuck. <laughs> See, I like that. It's kind of like setting something up, but as an opening line, like just as that first bit before the first full stop. It's a little bit boring. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Like it's clearly setting up a joke. It's like, if you only read knock knock and not the who's there and then the punchline. Uh, but <laughs> the challenge is opening line only. So at least it's not as bad as someone just saying their name. The next one is tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. This is by Gabrielle Zevin. And the opening line is before Mazer invented himself as Mazer, he was Samson Mazer. And before he was Samson Mazer, he was Samson Masur a change of two letters that transformed him from a nice, ostensibly Jewish boy to a professional builder of worlds. And for most of his youth, he was Sam, S-A-M, on the Hall of Fame of his grandfather's Donkey Kong machine, but mainly Sam. I like that, you know? I think we're setting the scene of like a changing identity, personal growth and development over time. You can also see how his childhood influences in other worlds and gaming, playing Donkey Kong, later turns into being a professional world builder, but interesting in the way that it goes in reverse. I think maybe I would be tempted even to put that there in third place, I think. Yeah, I, mm, mm, maybe even maybe even second place. I'm surprised that Breast and Eggs is still winning. <laughs> I was really expecting other things to kind of take its place there. I think, I think I'm gonna put that one in second, but equally that opening line was way longer than all of the others. So there's a bit more to play with, but let's see. I've got three more books. So the next one is called Crossroads. It's by Jonathan Franzen. And I actually had a writing class the other day where the teacher said, no one is allowed to call themselves literary. It's something that other people have to call you because like to refer to yourself as a literary fiction author suggests that your writing is like, elevated and complex and deep. So she's kind of like, someone else has to call you a literary fiction writer before you can call yourself a literary fiction writer with the exception <laughs> of Jonathan Franzen. So I'm intrigued. I've had very mixed reviews about his books. And all I have to go on right now is this opening line. The sky broken by the bare oaks and elms of New Prospect was full of moist promise. A pair of frontal systems greyly colluding to deliver a white Christmas. When Russ Hiddlebrunt made his morning rounds among the homes of the bedridden and senile parishioners in his Plymouth Fury wagon. Jesus Christ. How is that long, descriptive and boring all at the same time? That does not make me want to read this book at all. How do you make the opening line that detailed and yet simultaneously that dull? Hmm, okay, that's actually made me nervous because this is a big book that I was hoping to read, but I'm going to put it there, I think. The kitchen roll is doing God's work here. The kitchen roll supporting this tower is really the star of this video. Um, credit where credit's due, you know. An ultimate book is this one, The Crane Wife by CJ Hauser. And the opening line 
is this. Cap Joyce was a cowboy who ran an Arizona dude ranch called the Spur Cross because acting like a cowboy for tourists was more lucrative than the actual herding of cattle. I like that. I wasn't sure in the first half, but it got me in the second half, you know? Um, I think that could be. Hmm, I have to remind myself of this one. Hmm, I actually think that's my favorite one so far. I think that one actually really sets the tone of the book that it's gonna be a little bit tongue in cheek. I, hmm, I like, yeah, no, that, that was good. And now we have one final entry. This is Department of Speculation by Jenny Othel. And this opens like this. Antelopes have 10 times vision, you said. It was the beginning or close to it. That means that on a clear night, they can see the rings of Saturn. Again, that is so random. <laughs> Antelopes have 10 times vision. Sure, wh why not? Um, I think I'm gonna put, I think I'm gonna put that like here, maybe? It's interesting, I'm definitely intrigued. I wanna know more. I don't even know what that tells us about the book because it's just, that came out of left field. But yeah, that is my final rating of the opening lines of these 10 books. Thank you so, so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. I really appreciate it. And until next time, all the best, stay in touch, have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you very soon. Bye-bye.